Hey, how's it going? Um, holy crap, it's been nine months since I made one of these videos. Sorry about that, I'm gonna try and get back in the wagon and produce uh, at least one of these per week for the next little while until we finish this drum machine. Um, so here's where we left it. Um, we have the ability to play through a song. We can actually switch the song as well. And you can see as we uh, step through, oh, well, here's actually the first thing I'm gonna do is make this step through. So you can see it's actually changing the where we're meant to be in the song, but it's not actually progressing through the song. So let's do that. Um, we have a playback service. And I believe this next calls, uh, this next button invokes this next method where we increment the property, uh, which is fine, but we also want to call this play tick uh, method, which ultimately is gonna uh, make some sound. So let's do that. So we got our tick count and we will call this dot play tick with our tick count. So this should, when we click next, now step through the song as we want, which is cool. So this play tick method down here, I guess I had commented in what I ultimately wanted to do. Um, I want to update the object model to say, this is the current tick we're on. Then I want to ask the song for whatever the current notes are, and then I want to play those notes. So if we look at, uh, if I stop on one of these, so I'll just, I'll just stop here. So um, in this song, we have three different channels. Um, we're on this, obviously th these steps on the channels are active at the moment, uh, but here we should only play one song, uh, one sound, the snare. And we should play it at half uh, volume. So if I step through it again, uh, here's here we should play snare at full volume and hi-hat closed at half volume. So we need some way to ask the song for what the current notes are. I don't think we've implemented this yet, but um, let's just, we'll implement it and then uh, log out when we get back. Okay, so we have a song model and it doesn't have this get current notes. So this is a root song model. So we wanna implement get current notes. And uh, there's a number of ways we could build something like this. Um, so we want to build a notes array and ultimately return it. Uh, so how do we calculate the notes? So I guess we want to iterate over the channels and for any note that is for the current note that's playing, ask it for a sound. Um, so let's do that. So each channel has an active step, so we wanna grab that. So now we have the step, we want to calculate um, its volume. So each step has a volume, but also the channel itself has a volume, which we're not actually displaying in the UI here. Um, the reason being that at some point I wanna add a control here, a volume slider, which allows us to change all of the channel, and then it'll basically multiply against um, these volumes so that we can uh, change the volume both at the channel level and individually in the steps. So the volume is equal to the channel volume times the step, the playing step volume. Um, I'm gonna have a look at the model here. Uh, 
when I initially built the original version of this drum machine, I called volume velocity for the step and for the channel, I called it volume. So we actually have, we're using volume and velocity. So I think I'll refactor this at some point um, later, but for now, I guess we'll just live with this little bit of debt. Um, steps have used the word velocity for a volume. Um, so that should give us a volume for each playing step. So if we have a volume, uh, we want to add something to the notes. Um, and there are two things we care about, the name of the sound to play and the volume. So I guess the sound is going to come from the channel. and we'll pass in the volume. So something I've done in previous videos in this uh, series of tutorials was um, write tests as I'm, as I'm building this and actually use the test to drive the application. And that's how I normally build applications. I think that's how, if you build something for production, that's definitely uh, the way I would suggest doing it. Um, I'm not sure it makes for a good video though. So um, I'm going to try not write tests for the next few videos, see how it goes. Of course, there's a downside for that. Um, it means that I'm going to I write a set of code here and I haven't run it yet. So I don't know if it's going to work or not. So let's actually just run it and see what probably breaks, right? So songs not defined on playback service. So playback service. Um, so we haven't a song variable. So let's create one of those. Okay. Uh, step is not defined. This is in song itself in the song model. So we're iterating over the channels and um, it says step is not defined because I mislabeled it. So now when I press play, uh, you can see that we're actually emitting notes. These warnings are something that I'll address in a future video. Um, it's we're binding to a style attribute in one of our templates and we only did it in a, a quick way and we will come back to that in future. So these will go away. We can see that it's actually emitting an array of notes. So uh, hi-hat closed, volume 0 0.5, which seems to be good. Um, so uh, going back to our playback service, we now have these notes and we want to call sound service dot play with these notes. So let's open up the sound service. Um, maybe it's not called the sound service. It's called playback service. No, it's called audio service. Okay, so it already has this method called play, which just takes a single sound at the moment. Um, we want to pass in an array. So I'm going to create a second method called play notes. So what's this going to do? It's going to iterate over the notes and it's going to play those sounds, right? So we need a howl. Uh, notes. So for each note, we want to play something. So let's go how that play note dot sound. Let's see if that works. No, it does not. Sound service is not defined, of course. So in our playback service, we're just, uh, we haven't we did, this isn't something that's defined so far, so we want to get our sound service. And actually it's called audio service, right? Okay. And at the top of this uh, playback service, we want to define the our audio service which 
is ember.inject service. So this will give us access to uh, this service here, which we just added the play notes method to. So hopefully this will work. No, it does not. Okay. So, uh, cannot read property zero undefined in a howler. So we must be doing something wrong here. So we get how, how this dot get how note dot send. Let's put a bit debugger there and see what's actually happening. Um, uh, oh, so we're actually calling play, I think, right? So yeah, we're calling play, which is not designed to take an array, it takes a single sound. So actually we're going into this method here rather than this one. So I should be calling play notes. Um, okay, we don't need the debugger, it's actually playing sounds correctly. Okay, so uh, great. One thing it isn't doing though is um, in addition to the sound, we also have the volume. So, um, I'm not sure how this actually works. So let's find out how it works. So we're calling the play method. Um, documentation, okay, playback. Play. Okay, here we go. So it takes in the sprite, which I guess we're giving it, like the hi-hat. Um, how do you change the volume? Volume. Okay, so you can call volume on it and give it an ID of the sound ID. Um, does this return an ID? dot volume takes a volume so let's say 0 0.1 give it an ID is that how that works I guess so yeah okay so we want to pass in our note dot volume so we should note uh, notice the different uh, volumes so if I actually step through it So that's definitely lower than uh, that one. Nice. All right, I think that'll do for now. Um, when we come back the next video, probably next week, um, I'm gonna make this look like uh, not a polished shite.